Hello and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Hello and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is April 11th, 2014. My name is Lynn Marquedant and I'm your host. So I hope you have a project, grab it. It's amazing what we can get done together in 60 minutes. On today's episode, we're going to do two things. We're going to finish up our Raggedy Ann's, Ann and Andy, and then we're going to do some machine quilting here with my Bernina. And I also wanted to share what I learned with, from Matt about you quilts this week at the retreat. And then, of course, answer your emails and see what you're working on. So don't forget to send me your pictures. Again, it's lmarquedant at gmail.com or just comment on the Google or Facebook pages. So welcome. I hope you are enjoying your day. So if you remember last week, we had Sarah here, and I really want to thank Sarah for giving her time and her expertise to teach us about dolls. I've, I've accomplished some things since I've seen you last. One is, here is the Raggedy Ann, and here I made her a friend, Raggedy Andy. And each of them has one more thing to do, and I thought we'd do that before we get into the machine quilting. So specifically, and I hope you agree that they make a nice friends for the original Raggedy Ann. Here. Actually this one, Raggedy Ann, had a different apron at one point. I made her a white apron and I really didn't do a good job. I didn't read the instructions and so even though it looked fine, I wanted to do it again but I had run out of this white so I figured I would try the green. But this is the white one that I made. They're so easy and so fast. I mean, nothing like making a regular garment. And you'll notice this one has some rickrack. So what I thought I, the one last thing I have to do to her is I want to put some rickrack on her new apron. And then she'll be done. And then we need to put a hat on Andy. You'll see I made her hair. That is a chore and a half. I still haven't had the guts to cut it. But um, maybe I'll get to that. We'll see. I wanted to live with it like this. I kind of like the long hairs here and there. She is, after all, raggedy. But we'll see what, how she makes out. So I'm going to put this away. If anyone wants an apron for a raggedy and, and I have one. And like I say, I want to dress her up just with some rickrack. Check this out. I love this rickrack. I finally found it. I didn't find it in time to put it on the top of her dress, but I think it'll add a nice shock of white on her apron. So let's do that, and then we'll put Raggedy Andy's hat on. Let me get my glasses on. I hope you've all grabbed a project or are at least thinking about your quilty and sewing activities. I've threaded the machine with white on top and green on the bottom so that hopefully it all disappears. And I have to tell you there are different weights of thread so if all goes well it'll be fine but my bottom thread is more of a decorative rayon. I think they're both the same weight. Need to start the rickrack. There we go, and grab the feed dogs. Okay. So that's the hardest part. See how it's stuck there on the feet. There we go. And I'm just catching the rickrack. I'm not necessarily going right down the center of it. It's a big enough piece so it will stay in place. And I'm making sure to cover the hem. 
stitching that we have here. Can you see already? It just adds that fun little flare. Love it. Now what I'm going to do is raise up my do feed dog, put the end of the rickrack, stick it back under, and hopefully catch it as I come out to finish. So that should work. And it did. I'll cut off this other. And Miss Raggedy Ann's apron has a pretty rickrack. So let's put that on her again. She's a heavy girl. I stuffed her with lots of stuffing. And at the Quilt Guild meeting on Tuesday, I want to thank Linda. Linda shared a picture of her mother with all of the Raggedy Ann's that she had made. Boy, was that fun. You could hardly see her mother in the picture. There were so many Raggedy Ann's and Andy's. Lots of pairs. And Linda said she actually has several of the pairs that her mother made. So that's fun. All right. So there she is front and back. Let's go into your carriage and hang out with <laughs> with your friend. All right. Andy. Andy has a matching bow tie to go with Ann's apron. And it's not much to talk about. I put a couple of buttons on the front there and some buttons on the side. He was fun to make. You make him the same way you make Raggedy Ann. I get them all confused, Raggedy Ann. So what the one thing he needs, though, is his iconic hat. And I just happened to have a hat here that was very easy to make. And we'll put it right on the back there. See that? And I literally have a thread, a needle, and thread with white thread. And I'm just going to tack it into place. It's not like, well, actually, I'm going to first set my, my thread and my needle in the hat. It's not like Rat, he's going to be played with a lot. He's more just going to sit around and entertain the girls. Hope that made you laugh. And once we get this hat on, we will go back to quilting. But I'm really glad that people that, that you went through this process with me. Maybe you didn't make a Raggedy Ann, but at least got thinking about it, remembered some of your own dolls. I've had the nicest notes from all of you over the last couple of weeks. I want to thank you. It's just so fun to hear what people are doing. As you might imagine, it's very easy to catch the hair. Do you like the orange hair? Kind of matches the other one, my old-fashioned one. I got it at Joann's. It was on sale. So one more tack here. Okay. And then because it's not a long doll needle, I'm going to have to, if it was a long doll needle, I'd go straight down and I'd catch the other one here, but I wasn't thinking ahead, so I'm just going to bind this off. 
and I'm sorry, I know you can't see this very well. It's kind of like a nurse's hat. I wonder, I guess maybe I should finally read and understand the story. So Sarah, if you're out there watching, I think I saw your Raggedy Ann was finished. Send us a picture or post it. I know everyone would love to see it. I received notes to that effect this week so so now I'm just catching the other end here and then I'm going to catch the back of his head and I'm making sure to catch more than just the yarn I want to get down into the muslin and the stuffing to make sure it's really secure And the stitches aren't all together hidden. Well, I may have to do one more tack. There. One more. And then we'll get into machine quilting. I want to share with you what we learned. Okay. You know, I wrote a blog post yesterday about my smorgasbord of fiber, fiber projects that I just have to finish. And they're not old ones. You know, they're not even old UFOs. They're ones that we have started together or um, I've started in the last couple of months or that my darn hitty um, project of the month keeps, they keep coming in and the months keep racking on. I didn't even include my winter house quilt. I still have to put the binding on that. So, But we're making progress, and with this stitch, these raggedies will be done. All right. There and there. Sure. And there he is. So, why don't you go up there too? Hello. And I'm going to put them all back behind us. Yeah. Let's get back to quilting. For those of you who participated in the Spring Mystery Quilt, I can't wait to see the quilts completely done. I'm going to ask for pictures and we're going to do something fun with them. And that includes me. I need to finish mine. I've decided I'm going to call it Crocus and Daffodil because it has the purple and, and yellow. And as you remember, this is this is part of what it looks like. It's all quilted. Well, gee, I guess there's even less quilting than I thought. The crosses are all done. And I was waiting for the white thread. So I thought what I'd do today is talk about how I'm going to fill in all of these big patches that are really, they're, they're different scrappy neutrals, so they're not white. And I received my superior thread, King Tut Alabaster. It is uh, 40, let's see. I told myself I was going to learn these weights once and for all. 40, 40 weight. Feels great. Doesn't feel like a lot of lint. It'll be wonderful to use. So one of the first things, oh, I meant to tell you, so... I learned some things about machine quilting this week from 
a group called Mad About Quilts, and they're down in Mansfield, Massachusetts. And I'm sure there are places like this, or I hope, I hope there are places like this across the country and the world where you are. But basically what they do is they offer rental time for their machine quilts, quilting, quilting machines, their long arms. And you can go in, apparently the first time you take a two-hour test drive, you learn how to put a zipper on the quilt, and then you can zip it on and off the long arm machine. And then you can go back and work on your various quilts. And it was wonderful. They showed us many of their examples, several of which they had done on their home machine, like we're doing here, early on, before they invested in the long arm quilting machine. So they, they sent out, or they handed us things to think about. And I'm not going to go through them all, but I encourage you to go to madaboutquilts.com, where they will have that. This is their their work. And um, I guess what I'm going to do is try to walk through how I do machine quilting. I'm by no means an expert, but I've discovered that it's it's like doodling and on busy quilts and busy backgrounds like this with thread that absolutely just uh, disappears, you really can't go wrong. The real point is to remember what the point of the quilting is, which is to hold your three layers together so that you can use the quilt and it will keep you warm. But that said, I did want to give some thought to what I want to put in these squares. And one of the things that the women from Mad About Quilts talked about was test driving on something really busy to see if you could to, to try to perfect some of your quilt stitches. So I have to admit, in the past I probably would have just done a meandering stipple and not crossed over my, my stitching. But I want to try something a little bit more thoughtful. And I think it was them and, I'm looking for my thimble, um, thimble. <laughs> my goodness. You guys know. My bobbin. Unbelievable. It was seeing them and looking at the quilt behind me that again Dockside Quilting did and Chris Myers did and she now that I have a I have a much greater appreciation for all of the custom quilting she did on it and it's wonderful she spelled words she depending on what is in the windows of the houses that have a theme she then quilted a similar theme or icon on top so it was very fun So, considering I want to call this, I don't know if you can see that, I'm putting my cone of thread on, Crocus and Daffodil, I thought it might be fun to quilt some crocus, and who knows what, what is the plural of crocus, croci, <laughs> crocuses, I bet it's crocuses and daffodils, so I thought I would try and do some freeform quilting of them on it. We may find it's not even worth that effort, but we'll try it. Okay, so I've threaded that. I probably should change my needle, but let's, let's try it for one more time and see. And before I get going, I wanted to show you some doodles I did. So again, thinking about doing daffodil and crocus, and it's about an eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch square, that's one continuous quilting starting at one corner. So I thought I could do a crocus and a daffodil, a crocus and daffodil. Then I thought, well, maybe I could do a crocus and daffodil 
in each corner. Pretty busy. Then I thought, well, maybe we could just do one daffodil and then some swirls. And I'm kind of liking this. Because again, I don't think that doing this is really going to be worth all the effort. But let's try a few different ones and see how we make out. So next step, now that I have my quilting thread, again, Superior King Tut, I love, love it. The Mad About Quilts women said that they don't really believe it's worth the extra money, or at least this is what I heard not always worth the extra money to get the variegated and that's probably true especially on this alabaster I probably just as easily could have be, gotten a neutral thread um, or a cream or an off-white but live and learn and the other key thing are gloves with grippers I even have a hole in my thumb but that doesn't matter that helps me push the quilt back and forth and most importantly, I need my stitch regulator. Huh. Well, that is a first. What I'm going to do is I think my stitch regulator is right over here in my toolkit. So bear with me. Don't go anywhere. Let's see if it's in here. It is. Don't you want to know what else is in here? <laughs> A mini iron. You can always use that. Oh, blades. Oh, we're going to need this. Machine needles. So I'm going to leave those out because we want a fresh needle. And all sorts of other stuff that we don't need right now. Okay, so let's put my walking foot. It's interesting, I don't know if Sharon is out there from the, the retreat. For the first time, she showed me how to use the walking foot to do a quilt in a ditch. I must admit I never had luck doing that, but with the walking foot, you have the, the tongs in both the top and the bottom, so I'm going to try that someday. Okay. Just need to plug her in. There we go. So this is what I just put in there is a Bernina stitch regulator. And it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It regulates the stitch as I go along. It does some of the work for me and it makes it a more enjoyable experience. So now I'm going to put my feed dogs down so that I can move freely the quilt. The stitch regulator is turned on. Okay. Let's work on this one right here. Oh, but, well, let me put this in. I want to see who's out there. And you'll see I base with pins these days. I certainly have used thread in the past, but right now I'm into the pins. They're easier. So I'm going to look at this for inspiration. And I'm going to do one daffodil in this and then some swirls. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might do it even upside down. It'll be a 
challenge. Did you ever write your name um, in block letters? And you had to think about how to write the tops and the bottoms of it as you went through? It was always fun to do. Okay. So what I do is I pull my thread up to the top. So now I have both threads up to the top. I put them out the back. And I have a knot feature. So I make a knot there. I'm going to make one leave. First, I'm going to cut off the threads so they get out of the way. Now I'm doing this upside down, so this will be interesting. All right. Now I make the... Very fun. So literally, you try not to get tense, put your shoulders down, let the machine do the work. And I know you can't see this, and I'll post a, a picture online. It, it does look like an upside down daffodil to me, and you just keep going. So let's see who's out there, if anyone. Send me an email, lmarkwadot at gmail.com, or just leave a message. Karen, out in Pennsylvania, hello. Nice to hear from you. She says, the raggedies are fantastic. Thank you. And the Rick Rack is a perfect finishing touch. Tonight, she says, I'm putting the binding on my king-sized rainbow quilt. Oh, the one that you paper pieced? Enjoying a rainy evening in and looking forward to a sunny weekend for working in the yard. Me too. Oh, Karen. Oh, you have to post this online. Can everyone see that? Look at those rainbows and your piano keys. Oh, and the way you outlined it. Karen, that is stunning. Oh, you're going to have to... Show us how you did that. Wow. Thank you for sending that. Really, really, really like that. You know what? You should enter that in a fair. Oh, Peggy in Australia. She says, hello, quilting buddy Lynn. Hi, Peggy. You will be getting ready for Fibercast tonight. I'm going to have to miss this episode lies, live as I've had an unexpected appointment. Oh, no. I'm so disappointed not to be with you. However, I immediately watch as soon as I'm home. Oh, good. So, hi. Loved your show from last week and so loved seeing your lovely friend. It is a tremendous idea, Lynn, to have someone with you. You know, 
I'm glad to hear that feedback. I've I've received messages to that effect and I certainly enjoyed it. So anyone who wants to come here or I'll come to you, I'd love to do it. It's 7.46 a.m. in Brisbane and Peg says she's working on her spring autumn glory her simply or our simply colorful mystery. Oh, I love that. She's so enjoying it. It's going to be a wonderful quilt and I'm loving every minute. This week she finished a baby quilt and Celtic solstice. Wow. Wow. I'm also working on a green and pink modern log cabin. Just have to pick off stray threads from my finished items and then I will photograph and put on Facebook for us all to have a look. Oh, she says, dear, have a have a great face, Fibercast, and think of you often. That's so nice, Peg. Thank you. Deb Linehan. Oh, Deb. I'm not supposed to say last names. Ruh -ruh. Ah, she says, sorry. So this is to the, the Smorgasbord blog. She says, sorry, this Swede can't make it tonight. The wall painting has led to furniture painting. Ooh, trying my hand at chalk painting bureaus. I'll tune in to watch another day. Love your raggedies. Well, you have to tell us how the chalk painting goes. I assume you're... Are you making a chalkboard or is it a type of paint that's very chalk-like? You'll have to tell us about that or I'll Google it. And I know you mentioned you're going to make a raggedy for Will. If if you want to borrow my pattern, let me know. Because I don't think I'm going to be make. I had a blast, but I don't think I'm going to make one anytime soon. But you never know. Ah, Miss Michael from Sweet Woodruff. I hope I'm saying that right. I so enjoy seeing your posts, by the way, and I love that your likes are growing and your face your Facebook pages are growing, and. Uh, she says, I'm bringing my Purple Scrappy Sisters Choice Blocks tonight. Ooh, wonderful. Post pictures. I just love your posts. Everyone should, if you like to see, oh, and you can do a better job of describing this. It's vintage meets modern meets design aesthetic. Everything she does from her kitchen curtains to things that she has, they're just so well done and well placed and pretty and fun to look at. And she's witty and, and entertaining, too. So that's sweet woodruff. Joni. Hi, Joni. Joni says she's going to be trimming up all of Clue 1 blocks. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Love seeing your, your notes, Joni. Welcome. And Sandra, hi. I am loom. Sandra says she's loom knitting a baby hat tonight. You know, I've never done that. That's the round thing. Ooh, that would be fun to do. Love your dolls. Thank you. Ah, oh, so nice to hear from everyone. Norma, love the Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls. I have not done any sewing today, but I'm working on turning a small bedroom into a sewing room. You are going to love that because it'll be your little place that you don't have to pick up if you don't want to. I can't tell you how freeing it is that when you can leave something, you're in the middle of it, leave it all set up, go away, sleep on it, work on it. I mean, by that I mean go to work do your regular job, then come home and it's all laid out and with fresh eyes it's amazing how you see anomalies or things that stick out that you weren't seeing the day before and it's just because you can have your own room and you can keep it just the way you want. So that that's great fun. This is wonderful folks. Let me do one more and then I'll get back to my quilting. Elizabeth says, hi Elizabeth says, thank you for all you do, and I loved your live webcast from Retreat. Okay. You made us or me feel like we or I was there with you all. Please keep up your fiber casts. I enjoy them. 
Well, I will, Elizabeth, and that thank you for letting me know. And we'll try to do more from the road. That is great to know. Oh, and a note here from Jean, who was going to try to check in. She may have basketball or soccer. Oh, and Dennis! Just, be, you know, these little things are like crackberries. In fact, funny story, Karen, I hope this makes you laugh. Remember when Dad called his, called it a blueberry? When, back when blackberries were popular? Anyway, Dennis, welcome. By, by that I meant it was a crackberry because I, I felt it jiggle when Dennis just said he was here. And I couldn't just put it down, I had to check. So welcome. Let's get to quilting. Let's see. You spoil me. I just so look forward to this every Friday night. And, and I have to tell you, it's thanks to you I'm getting things done. Ooh, that felt good. A nice wide swing. Of course, this is the easiest part of the quilt to do. I'm right at the edge, and I'm not fighting with anything. Maybe you can see this if I move this away. I think because I'm on the edge, I'm going to try and do a crocus right here and then keep doing the swirls around to the other side. Well, that was fun. I don't know if it looks much like a crocus, but it has lots of little wispy leaves. I hope you're seeing some crocus. I took my walk today. I am being good and getting back into doing that every single day. And I saw lots of crocus. Very fun. Look at that. It doesn't need anything more fancy than that. Now, the question is, I think I'm going to have to stop it, meaning I'm going to finish up here, put a knot in it, and then I'm going to move over to the next one. Move up to the next one. So Dennis, I'm curious, I'm, a, I'm hoping the weather up in New Hampshire is going to be as beautiful as it is down here. It's expected to be in Massachusetts this weekend. We deserve it. I'm also going to be outside. Remember everyone, put your sunscreen on. <laughs> you can get really burnt this time of year. 
just what Karen in Pennsylvania needs to hear from me. <laughs> but I'm going to walk up to our community garden. I don't know if Bridget is on the line, but Bridget, my neighbor, and I have been going up to Penny's side yard. This will be her third year, my second year. And we have a community garden up there. This year, Penny's going to move some of her raspberries over, so I'm psyched about that. Now, you know how I didn't cut the underneath here between, I just picked up my machine and I moved it over to the next block? Because of that, I'm not going to bring the bottom thread up to the top because it's still attached at the bottom. But because it's attached, I know that it won't get in my way as I move forward. And it won't get knotted up. So I'm just going to leave it under there and then when I'm done, I'll clip it. I don't know if technically that's what I'm supposed to do, but it seems to work okay. And I think I'll do a daffodil. Probably more like a little, uh, is it a jonquil? The little daffodils. <laughs> I may have to do a few of those. Now I'm starting to make my big sweeping things. And I'm sorry, let me know if this is really not that interesting to do machine quilting. Next week I'm sure I'll be back to piecing my gray quilt. I want to say hi to Marquet and Norma. Cousin Norma, I hope you're out there. So love when you tune in and receiving your emails. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a daffodil coming back this way, just for kicks. I'm liking the color of the thread too. It's just so I don't know if you saw my post. I must give you an update on the car. Do you remember I had a car that for the third time didn't start? And I understand that's nothing compared to some other stories I've heard. So I had it towed away. They've given us a rental car. Last I knew, they were installing a new power control module. So keep your fingers crossed. Of course, they haven't called me today, so I don't know. I want my baby here in my driveway. Oh, 
All right, number two. We're cruising. Now I'm going to go over to this one so that hopefully you can see it. And again, I'm not going to cut my thread. I'm just going to keep moving over, take out the pins. I have lots of fabric in here that my sister and I traded and that is in my Celtic Solstice quilt. So that's fun to see. Okay, one more. Put on my knot, knotter. Okay, so now I'm going this way. What am I going to do? I think maybe I'll do a crocus right here. Do some swirls. See how that goes. I don't know about you, but I do find that moving the quilt certain ways is easier or more difficult. So you'll get the hang of it as you keep going. Like that movement isn't as smooth for whatever reason. It's A little leaves. Now I'm just doing swirls to fill in. And maybe what I'll do is another daffodil when I go over here. Long skinny leaves. And see, this way isn't great either because what I'm drawing is back here. Um, but actually it works because I can see at least my daffodils right side up. That makes it a little easier. You get into a rhythm. I must say my stitches aren't as nice and similarly sized as Dockside Quilting or Blueberry Lane Studios. Kelsey does. They both do such beautiful work.
Okay. Another one done. Let's let's, um, let's go back this way. So my goal will be by next week to have this back hanging behind me. I'm already thinking of ways to slightly change the pattern to make it pop even more. And I can't wait to see Rita's rendition of it and pegs and Okay, so same drill. I'm not cutting the thread when I go to my next place. I've taken all the pins out. I'm going to put my needle down and make another crocus. This is reminding me, as I'm, I'm imagining in my mind what a crocus looks like, and it reminds me that that's what I need to do is go look at a real crocus and really look at it. It's it's amazing what that does. It just so informs what you do. You know, you you might think in your mind you know what something looks like, but you just the more you look at it and really look, almost abstract it and forget what it is. Forget that it's a flower that's supposed to be pretty, that it's supposed to be catching the sun and the insects, you know, or all that. Just look at it for the form and the color and do what you want with it from there. You might want to interpret it non-realistically, that's fine, but if you want to do it realistically, there's no substitute for just really, really training yourself to look. And I haven't done that in a long time. other end. Now I think I'm going to do a daffodil back in toward the center. A tall one. <laughs> Did you see that stop? The, the um, stitch regulator must have thought I was going too fast or on a kilter so it knows enough to stop me.
I tell you, the machines are getting smarter than we are. My husband was reading an article in The Economist about all of the robots taking over. You know, having cars that drive themselves. We're not too far from that. I mean, we already have cars that'll park themselves or they'll stop if something's behind them or at the side of them. It's an amazing thing. In fact, at work today, they released a study, or actually it was middle of the week, they released a study about the digital universe. And they're saying by 2020, this is one of the stats I remember, by 2020, so that is six years from now, 27% of all of the data that is created in the world won't be created by you and me. It will be, be create, created by things emitting signals that say, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm working, I'm, you know, the satellites are saying it's this time, it's that time. The engines on airplanes are saying, I'm working, I'm working. I'm, you know, all that data is just going to be spewing. And hopefully we just harness it for the good. Now, for some reason I ended up in the middle of this. And I think I'm just going to finish her off with a knot. Hmm. Okay. And go on to the next one. This is wonderful. I feel like I'm getting something done here. I hope you're all making progress on your projects. Let me see who's out there, and I may be running out of time. Oh, my goodness. Huh. This hour goes so fast. I hope you all are having fun. Oh, oh and Judy's out there. She's looking at every square of the rainbow quilt. Wonderful. And is planting pansies. Oh, she's already planted them today. Wonderful. Oh, I bet they're beautiful. And lots of daffodils came out overnight. Oh, that's wonderful. She says, have a good weekend. Sorry, it's loading. Mm -hmm. Ah, looking good. Love the dolls. Sandra says, enjoying machine your machine quilting. Oh, good. Okay. Maybe you will inspire me to try it too. Curious as to how you will quilt the color blocks. Well, Sandra, I actually, for the most part, already have. And... If this doesn't show up, I'll try to post a picture of it. Can you see up in there, I did it very, very heavily quilted. And then, hmm. And then on this, down the middle, I did sort of, uh, just oblongs up and down but I'll take some pictures and you're right I haven't done this star at all and I don't know what I'm gonna do there so I say Sandra definitely try it with all the quilting you do and it's it's a piece of cake and you can't go wrong it's just it's doodling she says as I pick this up and I've probably got two layers together no Cousin Norma, so that is you, Norma. I'm watching your show and so glad you are working on your quilt. You make it look so easy. 
I had just finished my first machine quilted nine patch a few weeks ago. I still have a lot to learn about machine quilting. Well, I didn't do machine quilting for years. And that nine patch, oh, but did you say I just finished my first machine quilted nine patch? Awesome. So you're there. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Post it online. So glad you're there. Dennis says, hi again. Should have told you that my quilt took first place in my category in our guild's quilt show. Let me download it. That's wonderful. It's downloading right now. And we'll take, oh, are you kidding me? Dennis, look at this, everyone. That is a lot of little pieces. <gasps> How did you keep them all straight? That is amazing. It's a Bargello type, right? Congratulations. Well done. Wow. Will you all inspire me? If I didn't get to your, your comment, I will follow up individually or I'll read it next week. I hope that you have had fun made some progress, enjoyed this hour. We always get a lot done. And let me know what you want to see next week. I think I'll be working on my piecing, but if there are other requests, just let me know. So have a good week, and thanks for joining. Bye.